It is time. Sharks in order. Our shark. There's a shark NATO coming. <laughs> Hey, all my real sharks, you're listening to That Signal from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. It's your host, Rob, with his two co-hosts, Stephen Billy. Hey, guys. And you're listening to episode 21 of the Real Sharks Podcast. We got a great show for you guys here tonight. Before we get started, I just want to thank all our listeners all over the world. You guys truly make Real Sharks international. Thank you, guys. Chris Wood, thank you. All right, guys. So, once again, we may sound like a broken record here on this show, but we got some more remakes that are coming out. So, let's go ahead and get started with some of that movie news. So, Steve, what do you got for us here today? So, you guys know the epic failure that was Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Um, they're not done with the IP, guys. Uh, Jurassic World... You mean is, the JP? Yeah, they're still around, man. Um, they're going to make a third one, apparently. And guess who is coming back? Is it Chris Pratt? It's <laughs> not. It, well, it could be Chris <laughs> Pratt, but it's uh, the original cast from Jurassic Park 1. So that's Sam Neill. Oh, you mean, you mean Dr. Grant? Yeah. Dr. Grant. Yeah, Dr. Grant. So you got... Um, who else is there? Is the fly Samuel, Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, Jeff Goldblum. Laura Dern. And, and Laura Dern. Really? So, Jeff Goldblum's going to be in it? Yeah. He, yeah, yeah. He, he said that he was going to do it. And, oh. But he's going to actually be a perfect, like, a big figure like he was in Lost World. So they're going to focus, like, on those three. Huh. So this could be the ending, I think, of the Jurassic Park uh it's gonna be like a maybe it's gonna be like a Ghostbuster type thing where oh they go and they Lord. round up all the dinosaurs because all the dinosaurs are escaped in uh, North America, Steve. Yeah, that and was the last one. And they're all female too, by the way. They're gonna say like all oh, the dinosaurs are Steve, female. Steve, you know, life finds a way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Are we gonna have another dinosaur yelling at a, a lion at the end? And for those of you who have never heard our uh, Jurassic Park special, that is actually up on our uh, catalog on Real Sharks at RadioPublic.com. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, I uh, I'm not excited. I'm not excited. I thought Fallen Kingdom was abysmal, and I will keep saying this. I mean, the third one brought us Alan. I take a marathon of that over Fallen Kingdom because Fallen Kingdom was terrible. It's just one of the most worst cliche movies I've ever seen. It was. But bringing know, back the three scientists, though, I mean, that's pretty cool. We haven't seen uh, all three of those since the what, the first film. So this this is going to be, it's an interesting t- take, and you can tell they're like, we need these people back. They're not coming back after this last. Says you, Steve. You've seen the last film. Oh, it's terrible. Um, I mean, bringing back the original three, kind of smart, I would say. They're going to make a whole army of Indo-Raptors <laughs> in this movie. And there's going to be that one guy who also comes back, that one guy who was killed off in uh, the first Fallen uh, Jurassic World. Yeah. The guy who was like the scientist dude, who was all like, everything's here trying to eat the other, you know? <laughs> that guy's going to come back, but he's going to be half a robot, cyborg, and he's going to be able to control all these Indo-Raptors with the laser. Oh, really? Yeah, he's going to be able to point. It's like a <laughs> missile-guided system, you know? But for the Raptors. He's speaking English one sentence and then he's like, You think I'm crazy and all my listeners out there, you may think we're crazy. But I'm telling you right now, after seeing Fallen Kingdom, I would not have put that past the Jurassic Park <laughs> franchise. I mean, because realistically, it was god-awful. I mean, they basically made Dr. Wu like an evil villain. So I would like to see a film that is mostly like a, a thriller about them chasing Dr. Wu. You know, all three of them are just right there on his heels. Like, as soon as they turn the corner, they see, like, the end of his foot. You know? <laughs> One step behind Dr. Wu. Kind of like, uh, almost like uh, Carmen Sandiego. Yes, but, you know, but Dr. Wu is, like, throwing traps and dinosaurs in their past, so they got to fight these dinosaurs and get past, you know, like, they enter an apartment complex after them. But guess what? All of a sudden, boom, out of every door in the complex, just endo-raptors. <laughs> telling you, that's going to be the movie. That's, that's the Academy right there. Dr. Dre's uh, next episode plays, and it's just, yeah. You know what? That's that's the Jurassic Park movie. I I would be down for that. 
You know, you guys would. Uh, I don't know if you guys have been following on the DC news, but they've been in the news a lot. Uh, kind of under the radar, but a lot. And you can kind of say for the good and bad reasons. The Joker film has been on a lot of people's minds still, and not in a good way. Uh, it's been getting a lot of controversial statements about how the film's overall message isn't, I don't know, correct well, you know, Yeah, we, we discussed this in the last episode. We'll go through it real quick. But, but they were talking about the uh, Aurora shootings that happened with the Dark Yeah, Knight. yeah, yeah. I get it. To each their own, yeah, if you think that movie is somehow, you know, connected and out makes you outraged to that original shooting, is okay, fine, whatever. It's just a film. That's all I'm going to say about it. It's just a film. We already I, listed out all this outrage. Yeah, we did. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And then we also have the Batman. <laughs> you know, that one Batman film that uh, we with don't With Pattinson? Know. Yeah, with Pattinson. So you guys know that um, there's been some runnings going on for the Penguin being played at, from Jonah Hill. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about Jonah Hill coming in to play one of these roles. Wow, this is ri- that is ridiculous. Jonah Hill as uh, as the Penguin. This must be a comedy. Ah, I this is what I, you know. I don't know. What are they thinking? I, I'm sorry. What are they thinking. I like Jonah Hill as a comedian, but he has never once did a serious role I thought was good. I know people are gonna say, but he won that award. Sorry. I do not care. That award was a pity award. <laughs> That, ball. Yeah, yeah, I don't care. That movie was terrible. He was not, that movie no, wasn't that movie terrible, was good. It was good. but he was terrible in it. Yeah, he just was. As, he was also terrible in The Wolf on Wall Street. Don't care what anyone has to say. He was terrible in that film too. Also, uh, you guys know the the actor who's going to play the new Blade in the Blade series uh, oh, Blade movie uh, uh, from the new Blade movie that's coming out. Marshala Ali, forgive me if I pronounce his name wrong. But he is out. He was actually the front man to play James Gordon. So Jim Gordon really? was going to be played by a black guy. But I guess Whoa. Was like, wait a minute, hold That's on. That's not that crazy. I mean, Harvey Dent was played by uh, Lando Calrissian. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Um, I, what are they doing with the Batman film, guys? Are they just intentionally trying to screw it up to get notoriety right now? I don't because mind if they there? portray a character in black or white. You know, that doesn't matter to me. Jonah it's Hill, not- the... the- <laughs> that I have a problem with, but I'm and saying it's Pattinson, if, really. I'm just saying if you like are gonna say, Oh, are you mad because like, you know, Jim Gordon's not white? No, because you know how many times Jim Gordon's been white in all the films? I don't really care at that point. But the, <laughs> just not not just that, I think just you know, cause I, I, I don't doing. know if you heard, they're actually talking about for the new Superman movie making uh Lex Luthor black. Yes, yeah, I heard see, that. I am perfectly okay with That's that. Interesting. No, I was having this conversation with someone off air and let me tell you, they were like, Why do you think that'd be a good idea? I said, Because in this divisive country in this day and age, what does Lex Luthor represent usually? Humanity. And I was like, and he represents this idea of like, uh, you know, one person shouldn't have too much power. Being Superman, he thinks Superman's a god. He thinks no one should have that much power, except him. (laughs) But the whole point is, he's supposed to represent what he thinks is humanity. I can't imagine a better, like, ethnic role than for it to be a black man fighting for humanity. (laughs) That's perfect. (laughs) That's that is funny. perfect. That's a that good is. story. It writes itself. That's it a, does. That, I mean, I mean, why not? And then getting corrupt just like everybody else does. You know, that yeah. Kind of corrupt it. So, but here's the thing about this film. We're not done with the Jonah Hill thing. Is it was rumored. These are all rumors surrounding the Jonah Hill playing the Penguin. But there's also a leading rumor beyond that that he wants to play the Riddler. Why? So the Jonah chubby Ryan, Riddler. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know if it's just me Sorry. being cynical, guys, but Jonah Hill just playing the Riddler or the Penguin is just not a... I, I'd rather have game, yeah. Josh Glad play the Penguin. Much the simple. guy from Gotham? No, the, Josh Glad did... Um, he plays Olaf in Frozen. Oh, okay. Um, I don't... You know, what can they do? Are they trying to go... How about not... Do, do like, the Penguin and the Riddler. How yeah, about that? Right. Don't How about do, do that. like don't Clayface, do Killer Croc? You can do all kinds yeah, of Batman. Like, Batman's Rogue Gallery. There's a ton of uh, characters you can do. A ton of villains. There. I don't know why they even want to like limit themselves and be like, no, we got to do the Riddler. We got to do the Penguin. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's a very good point that you made, uh, Rob. Because again, you're having the Batman film coming out with his own Batman uh, Batman film, obviously, and the Joker. So you can't put the Joker in that film. Uh, 
and they want to go a different route. Why the whole thing where we're going to go with the Riddler? We already seen that. It's yeah, like, we had Jim Carrey. We had Jim Carrey. And again, as I've said before, every character in the movies, they just try to make him a ripoff of the Joker because the Joker has been done already. Yeah. That's, so, that's and they just you, chase uh, the Joker. I did. Unless they're going to make the uh, villain, the core essence of villain, like, you know, the Riddler trying to outsmart Batman, the Penguin trying to outspend Batman. You know, yeah. the Penguin's not even that big of a character, really, in oh. Batman. I mean, he is a... I know people are saying, what the Penguin? He's a predominant character, but he's supposed to only represent this idea of if Bruce used his uh, money for evil. Yeah. That's all the Penguin character. does. He's yeah. like the middleman for all the crimes. <laughs> he doesn't, like, do the crime himself. Not usually. He usually pays someone else to do it. And then Batman usually gets him first to get the informant for the real bad guy. Yeah. He, he usually, first, yeah, the, the Penguin guy. usually squeals on his own, like, <laughs> schemes. Yeah, he does. So I don't, I don't. I don't get why you even do the Penguin and the Riddler. If you're not going to have the Riddler try to outsmart Batman, then don't even have his character at all, because then he's just being chaotic like the Joker, and that's not the Riddler. The whole point of the Riddler is to outsmart Batman. He's supposed to represent Batman's wits. Uh, you know, sticking with DC, you know, DC's animated movies is going to be coming out with a, a new movie. Uh, it's actually going to be with Superman again, and it's going to be called um, Superman Red Sun. And it's based on yes! the, the Soviet the, Superman. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. Superman. Cannot was, wait for that. I've been waiting for this. I know a lot of people have been waiting for it. I mean, the miniseries came, or miniseries comic came out in 2003. Mm -hmm. And it's based if what if Superman, Superman landed was in the Soviet Union. Soviet Union. Yeah. It's so, a really good, really good uh, book. I, it, it is. I've read it. I mean, I haven't read it in a while, but man, am I excited that's a tall, for this. That's a tall order to, to I don't know how they're going to do that. I mean, they kind of flubbed that Killing Joke one. So well, You know, the problem with the Killing Joke, I think, I don't know why, but it was just so short, and they just seemed like they had to add that whole Batman other story. Girl, yeah, that was hell? weird. That was like, weird. you had to have, they had, it seemed like they needed to establish this like, connection between them two. Interest. It's like, we but already why? know Batman and uh, Barbara already, or, you know, Bruce and uh, Barbara, Batman and Batman. You already know there's a connection there. I don't, you know, whatever you want to say. Like father daughter, <laughs> though. Yeah. yeah. I'm not saying it wasn't weird. I'm just saying we already know there's a connection between the two. You don't have to make a whole another half hour just to establish that. And if you didn't have anything to fill the time for a half hour, then, I don't know, do another animated short. <laughs> I mean, look, you know, like what they did with the Jonah Hex stuff. I mean, they did a whole entire series with Black Adam and yeah. Sam. I mean, yeah, they should have just cut in another little short and just made it a two-parter somehow. I mean, they've done that before. They have. I don't know. I don't know why uh, DC did that. I don't know, but I'm looking forward to this ever since uh, I watched uh, Reign of Superman. I've been waiting for another Yeah, Reign Superman. of Superman is awesome. Yeah, Reign of Superman, I really enjoyed. I thought yeah, it was, was good. fantastic. I mean, kind of played a little different from how the original with Doomsday, or the original Doomsday movie was. Well, like, it is actually kind of like multiple branched issues yeah. off of that, co uh, collaborated and combined together, because after Superman, you had, you know, Steel, you had all these different kind of people that came after, you know, Superboy, uh, the mechanic, the, uh, Robot Superman. You had all these different kind of Superman come up after uh, Superman died. And it was kind of like a little cliche slash pun they did to kind of make all these different issues about them because they wanted people to really think Superman was really dead. And it was an opportunity to make, you know, new characters off DC Universe. But I thought Reign of Superman was awesome. So, yeah, you know, I'm going to actually kind of give a little review here. I may be late on the game in this one. I want to actually talk about the Netflix movie. I believe it came out in 2018, but I think it may have just been released now. Is uh, the Netflix movie "We've Always Lived in the Castle"? Very interesting film. Uh, let me just tell you, you know, it was. Uh, I sat there and I watched the trailer, and I was like, "Huh." All right, I'm gonna give this film a shot. Basically, it starts out with the uh, this girl who is given a silver coin, and she goes into town to buy groceries, and she comes back to the house, and you know, it's narrated by her, and she tells a story of like. My sister gives me a silver coin to go into uh, town every day. And this girl's doing a lot of witchcraft. I might, uh, let me just add too, she's doing a lot of things to protect herself and her family, such as burying some of these silver coins in jars. So anyway, she's uh, going to the town, and apparently the whole town hates her and her family because her dad was very wealthy, and their family has this huge kind of like castle kind of mansion. And uh, 
basically the whole town hates them. They just hate them because they've been wealthy and the dad was real mean and the dad, uh, they were all poisoned. The whole family was poisoned. So most of them got poisoned. So there's only about, there's only three of them, well, sorry, there's only uh, three of them left, which is their uncle, the little girl, and her sister. And it's a, it's a weird film. And by weird, I mean, there is not a real premise of a hero in this film. The main character is not a good person. Uh, I actually film, uh, and I'm not going to give too much away, no spoilers. Uh, I actually feel like she actually does the ultimate damage to the family. You have the typical cousin that comes back to this family to try and fix it because the family's very wealthy and he's basically there to fix the whole family. And what he finds out through this family is everyone has some problems. Basically, the sister never wants to leave the house. The little girl is burying coins everywhere. And at first they're like, He's like, you know, you can't do this with the money. And she's like, it's okay, just let her do it. Because the sister is crazy herself. And he's like, no, what if she's burying like $46,000 all around the property? And she's like, it's okay, we have plenty of money. So they're just giving these coins away practically. And then the uncle is obsessed with the entire night of the murder of the family. Of his brother, of everything. He's just obsessed. And he's constantly going through papers and reliving it and trying to do this book. And it's a, it's a real interesting film, but it's not the typical, uh, the cousin comes and he, he wants all the money. I mean, that is in there. I won't lie to you. And I'm not giving too much away because that should be obvious for any cinema buff. You should know that's a typical cliche in a film is when the guy comes, you've never seen him before. Oh, bridge family. He's usually there for the money. But it's so much more than that in this film. And everybody's insane. Even the town is insane. But in the end, you truly see this idea of like how savage people can get, and how savage and how cruel a town could be to a family, and it's almost tragically hypocritical because the town hates these people. They freaking hate them, yet they are paying these people for bread with silver coins. And the town is still like we hate these people and they have too much money. It's like, but they are giving you thousands of dollars in silver coins. So it's a big whole, like, like this idea, that this big whole trope on, you know, do you hate, how do you hate the rich and do the rich hate the poor? I mean, I wouldn't say it's good because I, the, en the ending was uh, left a little to be desired to me because the ending kind of just, uh, how can I say this? It was more of a mop up, let's go back to the way it was kind of ending. And I was like, okay, nothing really changed. All I really seen was how insane the family is. But I definitely recommend it for a movie for uh, just if you're sitting down drinking a glass of wine to watch. Because this film will definitely kind of make you go, okay, who is insane in this family? Who's the real crazy person? Yeah, Um. okay. So I'm actually going to disagree with you because I do remember watching this film randomly didn't even i didn't even know what it was other than uh sebastian stan the, the actor that plays for all the people that don't know he plays the winter soldier in the avenger films and marvel um i didn't know it was going to be this weird and and let me say like it it's weird. like super weird right out of the gate it's like witchcraft everything, it's yeah witchcrafty very droll i'm just like okay another one of these like melancholy towns it's like what are we? Uh, you can you can tell that it's it's a book adaptation because it's totally not real, right? You're like this no no places like this. And like you said, this talent folk have this like vendetta in the beginning against the family, and you're like, oh okay, I get it. The uncle, yeah, like you said, there it, it the family is deprived of this uncle who's totally just like to himself doesn't really get he's it. out of his mind he's crazy he's like a they're crazy all crazy though conspiracy theorist yes at, at a point about we who were, killed the family when you yeah. were saying that i was just like that's exactly because he's going through all of this stuff and then it's just really just about like the, the two sisters where the older sister is more of like in her own head and is like everything is fine mm -hmm. and then you kind of think see and then this is why this film and I understand what you were kind of saying. It's like she's living in her head because she's like, everything's cool. Like, nothing's wrong. Like, the family's okay. We're all going to be good. The fa the money's there, and it's never going to go away. And this, the little sister, you still don't really know. They never really close the book, which I, I understand that. It's a book adaptation. They're not supposed to explain the characters. But like you were saying, why I don't think this is a good film is – 
the ending was just like, let's hurry this up. We don't know. Yeah. We don't know how to wrap this up. We we but made it's an a interesting good film. They made a good story, but it's like you didn't know how to end it. Yeah. It's like you just that were like, well, let's just go the us. classic cliche, like everything's gonna be okay. It's but like, if you yeah. want to get a good sum up of how this movie is, you gotta watch let me it. let me let me tell you this. The, the the main cousin, the cousin asked like the whole family, why do you all hate me? And it's all interesting because the little girl says, I think you're a ghost and the demon of my father. The sister goes like, why don't you just let me clean up the room? Like, she's like, let me just put things back to the way it is so we don't have to talk about it anymore. And then the uncle goes, he actually calls him his brother's name. And he's all like, because they even say in the film that the cousin looks just like the father. So he's just like, but he switches back and forth. He's like Sugar Island crazy. So, like, he'll go like, John, if you hate us so bad, we will leave the house. But I must ask that you reflect on this decision. And then he'll jump right back and be like, you know something, Chris? You're a foul man. You're a foul man. And he's like, why are you calling me your brother? So it's just like this one guy is coming to this whole madhouse of craziness. And guess what? He's not the villain in the film, which I'm not going to give it away. And it was, it did make the film very interesting, I will say. That's yeah, all I'm going to say about it. it you, like you said, you, you were thinking like this but guy's coming Steve's in. take is very good. It was, you could clearly tell it's a book adaptation that... Really fell through at the end. Before the credits even rolled in the beginning, the you know what I mean, title credit. You're just like, God, this is gonna be a. a you can tell the book adaptation just because of how little the world is. It's the, the world is basically this town. Nothing exists. I really like your it. whole. It's a melancholy type story because that's exactly what it is. No one's it, happy. No one's happy. <laughs> no, there's not a. Maybe that's why I liked it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> not even the. I would say maybe the. Uh, no, not even the cousin. Right? He he's not happy either. He's happy he, for like a minute when he meets the older sister, the older sister because there's a lot of little incest going on between yeah, cousins. Yeah. Like but I mean, it doesn't happen. But it's a little thing. Like she's never yeah, had a. She's never been around a boy in a long time. Yeah. Hands and stuff like that. But yeah, it's an interesting film. But it is based off of a book. Um, the author is uh, Shirley Jackson. Yeah, she also made uh, another book called uh, Concussion, which was uh, it's all right. It's another, I think, a film adaptation. But just this one right here was just like I think she was like I'm regurgitating all I have just in this one book, and it's so crazy. It's very creative, like you were saying. It is, but it's very it's cliche at the very end. Very cliche, oh and that's yeah. what I think it hurts the yeah. most, because if she could have stuck the landing with the film, I felt like a lot of people would have known it. But since it didn't, and a lot of people kind of only care about the ending, especially now, they're like, oh, that was a good film, but was the ending good? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was I think, good. I, I, I felt the film. ending, just to me, I've never said this about an ending of a film. Well, I have. There's another one I'll say. It definitely felt like it robbed me of an ending. Put it that way. I watched the whole thing just to be robbed of a good generic ending. You're just like, oh my god, really? Yeah. And then the film just ends. Yeah. I mean, the other book that, that's been made into movie is that's based off of her uh, book is the the haunting on Hill House. So that's why her name may sound familiar to some of you guys. It's because it's from her. So we'll be right back on my real sharks. Do you or someone you know struggle through life with anxiety-related mental disorders? Ever get that feeling that you are one of the few? I'm here to tell you that you are not alone. Take a journey with me as I talk about key points in my past and how they may have led to me being diagnosed with anxiety and panic disorder. After which, we will talk about different ways to tone down the anxiety and maybe even beat it together on anxiety. The easiest way to remember the name is by thinking about how one searches for a state of zen in the midst of the anxieties of life. My name is Gerald, and I'm the host of Anxiety. And welcome back to episode 21 on My Real Sharks. So, who sold the new It movie? First of all, I'll just say I didn't need to see it, but I already know about it. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. You haven't seen it? I haven't seen it okay. yet. Steve, I'm... let me guess. Was Spoilers. Was it a monster at the end? There was a monster. They didn't even change it, I heard. So I heard they didn't even change spoilers, it. Spoilers, guys, because I'm going to spoil the hell out of this film in three, two, 
It's the same spider monster again. And guess what they changed? They just changed it by having the His Pennywise. face projected on it, right? Yeah, no, the whole, like, upper body of the spider was just, like, Pennywise. And really? then, like, all the other thing was, like, a spider. And you're just like... <sighs> It was an alien. It was, it was an alien. What are they doing? So it's say so it's a spider. <laughs> Dude, we, we have talking baby rotten head singing in a fish tank. We have a baby Pennywise face. It was so. You guys want me to skip to the end? I'm gonna. All right, I'm gonna skip to the end. <laughs> Go ahead. So they basically. Wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me, let me start. Was the whole movie about how they came back as an adult and they had a face their oh, fear yeah. as an adult and they just got wiped out the yeah. camera you basically okay. you guys know the story it didn't <laughs> change they come back as adults um pennywise has come back again which was really weird they have like some weird lgbt bashing in the beginning yeah. there was like really? yeah it was like uh like some gay couple were was getting like harassed on a on a i don't even know a boardwalk and then like pennywise just kills them hmm. it was like what was that yeah. it was really weird i guess it was just trying to be like he's in it which he isn't even in the film, guys, a lot. It was just like he's in it, oh, I don't know, a handful because of times. Because they were like, I thought we killed him. Right, but I think he's coming back. Uh-oh, there's some stuff in my food. Yeah. Okay, that, so they have that. that. They, they have, have that. that. Yeah, no, they that, at the Chinese restaurant? So they're at the Chinese restaurant. That's oh. what I'm saying, where there's like a, a fish tank, and they have like baby heads that are rotting, <laughs> singing. So I didn't even see this movie yet, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. Yeah, they're like singing opera. Op it's like they do such a bad job of like trying to create this horror tension moment, and then they just ruin it with funny. And then they ruined wow. it again by not changing the ending because it's a freaking alien. They did. I don't care what anyone says. That's an alien. It's not a spider. It's an alien. <laughs> okay, so Rob, like you said, you saw the second film. How did it end? Do you know how they killed uh, Pennywise? I actually don't around? remember. Was it the sunlight? They like no. shot like a silver thing out of a slingshot. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. And he like hit him in the head. And he's like. Ugh. Is that what happened this one too? Okay, no, dude. They so they basically bully him to death. What? They're just like, you're a mean clown. I oh hate you. God. And then he wow. loses his powers, and he's like, oh my god, I are you telling me that I'm an evil clown? He turns into this weird baby Pennywise, what? and they like take the heart out of him, literally, Kali Ma style, oh and they god. all just crush his heart, and he dies. Interesting. It's a, and it's a weird he's like, thing. No, whoever thought anyone would insult me. It's just like that. He's basically <laughs> killing the kid. He's he, he can kill them right at this point. He's a yeah. giant spider CGI. He's got like these like claw things where he just he kills one of the the people too. By the way, oh, he's the God. wisest of them all. And the giant shit. spider. Yeah. Oh yeah, no gang bang in this one as well. So <laughs> if you guys are looking for that, it's not in this one. But they skipped it to for a giant spider that turns into a baby crying clown wow and the film <laughs> ends i swear that's how to it god ends. it just ends after they crush this baby pennywise's heart wow so wow you know at least the miniseries did a better ending than that then but yeah. that was the same ending they do, no, they do get no, into they where kill it, but they don't crush its heart yeah they, they they get into the whole why where did he come from he's yeah. an alien that came from the planet and uh really yeah, yeah you actually there's the like a huge backstory does. about like he lands on the planet like eons ago and then like these native americans sealed his power away so that's why he's only able to come back 27 <laughs> years but then at the end of the film pennywise is like yeah that's a bunch of bullshit Really? Yeah, they do. They just start doing this chant, you know, to like kind of suppress his power, and he just like, yeah, that didn't work, and he just killed like <laughs> one of them. It was just ridiculous, and yeah, That's they funny. yell some insults and kill him. Sounds a lot like Tommy Knockers almost, just with the clown. <laughs> yeah, uh, disappointing, and they they spent so much money, uh, millions of dollars, and it was like three hours long, not <laughs> worth watching. Here's a, here's a movie I think actually, and you know, speaking of Stephen King and aliens. We're actually uh, going to revisit a film tonight. We're going to revisit 2007's The Mist, written and directed by Frank Darabont. You know, I actually, uh, I won't lie, I actually really did enjoy The Mist. Favorite I mean. Stephen King film. Really? Yeah. It's up there. It's, it's your favorite. It's tied. So, for those of you who have never seen the movie, and I'm not talking about that crappy series, because that series is absolute crap. Oh, come on. No, that movie's bad. You know, I mean... I mean, this one has the Punisher in it, first of all. Thomas <laughs> Jane! Yeah. Badass in this too. He's awesome in this movie, actually. But yeah, you know, The Mist is, if you've never seen it, it's basically about a small town where it's on, um, basically on the steps of a military base. 
that does experimentation, and all of a sudden, all hell breaks loose and the giant mist comes into the town and traps a bunch of people in a convenience store. And they all start to lose their minds. And they all start to kill one and each, <laughs> kill each other. <laughs> it's a very unique film with an ending, I might add, that is not from the book. The ending to this movie, and I will not spoil it for you who have never seen it. In fact, you know what? I'm going to spoil it. <laughs> <laughs> Change so, your mind? Yeah. So the ending of this film actually, as you know, for those of you who haven't seen it, spoilers, he actually shoots his kid and everybody else in the end. That was not in the novel. The director actually made that ending for the film. Stephen King actually called him up after the movie premiered and said, I wish I had thought of that ending. Because in the ending of the book, because I've read the book, they just drive off into the mist. Yeah, yeah they got like stopped in a motel and that was it. Yeah. But, you know, the mist actually gives it a conclusion and everything. Wow, when this movie came out, it was hated. <laughs> God, yeah. God. Probably because the uh, religious performance uh, by... Uh, Marsha Gray Harden played by, um, or she played uh, Miss uh, or Miss Carmody. Yeah, her performance in that it's movie fantastic. just yeah, oh, it was it's fantastic. Brilliant. Just made so many people so angry. <laughs> Dude, it was so good. She's probably like one of the better villains I've seen. Yeah, in this modern era of film. Like, yeah, she was she her. was great. She was terrible. Yeah, and that movie just kind of makes people really angry at the whole religious parts of things. I mean, it really upsets you, kind of. If you if you're really not, you know, because you in horror movies you always put yourself in those kind of places, and it's just really interesting because you're just like, oh my god, I would kill this woman already. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's like a Jim Jones in this convenience store, oh, and they even state that in the movie. Yeah, right? He's like, good. you got our own personal Jim Jones in here. <laughs> good call. And, you know, it's like the danger inside and the danger outside. Which is more dangerous, the people or the aliens? I'm taking the people. And that's, uh, that's you know, how Stephen King novels work. That's the twist. Gave you the M. Night Shyamalan twist there. How about these aliens in this film? How do you feel about them, Rob? You know, they're... I actually, you know, for those of you who probably... I'm a really go geek out and nerd out for those of you who don't remember this. I don't know if you guys ever remember the game uh, Half-Life when it came out, but that's what oh. the mist reminded me of. And those are just some, like, giant bipedal, like, aliens from another world, you know? I mean, I, that's that's the mist, Acid I mean. spitting spiders. Oh, God, that was brutal. That was the worst. When they call, start coming out of them. It was awful. <laughs> that scene probably is the most brutal scene. God, got turned into a spider Happy Meal. He did. <laughs> they spit the acid on that one dude. Oh God. Uh, you know what? This film is a lot of. Uh, you know, you would. It starts off as like okay. It's a, it's a held up bunker kind of film. Held up yeah. bunker, but the twist, the twists were just so good. About that, yeah. How like the monsters were? In, I would say they're kind of innovative and scary as hell. Yeah, they're they're pretty. You kind of were just like, well, like the the flying bug spider. Oh yeah. It like chewed on that la lady's thing. It like she, stung her, and she like went into like some kind of like uh, cardiac yeah, like, cardiac arrest, allergic yeah. reaction, something. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, it was so like every single mist monster they showed, even to the end where they show that big huge one, just so you know you're like, oh, I'm fucked. Yeah. <laughs> There's, like yeah. no way. And that, they travel all that way, and everything's covered in that. Spider. Spider, you know, like, even his wife's wife. dead. And, then, you know, that was funny, too. I like how he drives by his house, and, oh, yeah, he could see his wife. Just <laughs> stapled to the wall. <laughs> she, he looks up. Yeah, he, she's dead. We can go. Like, <laughs> That's why she's dead. You can go ahead and, you know, bang that other chick with you. <laughs> <laughs> Which he doesn't. He kills her, by the way. He yeah. He never, he doesn't get there. He has to kill her. Terrible. Yeah. You know what's funny, though? It's interesting things about that film. That was, uh... Half the cast from Wa the original Walking Dead is in that movie. That is so funny that you mentioned that. And then, you know what's funny? They're like the last people to die. Uh, Dale, the older guy. Yeah. Uh, the chick, the main chick, she's in it. She was like one of the last. They're mm -hmm. like the last two. Yeah, she's the one that's like, can any of you see a woman home? That was such a good performance. I think that was her first role she that ever her, did. Yeah, that was her first role. And she survives, by the way, right? And then she gets her yeah. kids, and she's yeah, looking she at them like, end, you she, fuck, you should have yeah. helped me out. So you should have went with me, stupid. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, I like that film, though. Yeah, so... It, it takes some time to grow on you. I actually liked it off the bat, because I know people don't like it, but I think the best kind of films are those ones that can upset you, that can enrage you from a yeah. character. That doesn't sure mean you hate it. You're just like, man, I really hated that character because you were really into it. That's why. They did some stupid stuff, though, Rob, in the film. Like what? Stupid? Uh, yeah. You know, remember when the, the little, like, shop boy, the bag boy goes in the back and he's like... The guy from American Pie? Yeah. Stiff, <laughs> what's his? The Stiff Meister. Stiff Meister. He gets killed. I'm like, oh. And he gets killed brutally, too. Oh, like, no, I love that part. I love, I love the Punisher when he goes all crazy. And he's just like, <laughs> I just got that kid's butt on me. 
<laughs> that's a good scene. He did a, you know what? And that's the funny thing. People are gonna be like, "Oh, the Punisher's in it." I'm like, he did a really rousing role when he kills his kid, yeah. and he's like trying to kill himself. I like uh, that guy a lot. The only problem is like, you know, going a little off the mist. I just hate to say it, Punisher Warzone's better. <laughs> it's just better. It's a better film. If you guys go ahead and disagree with me all you want. Punisher Warzone is way better than the first Punisher. The only reason the first Punisher is good is because it's like a PG-13 of how the Punisher was created. Yeah. One. And I love the guy who plays the Punisher, of course. I love him in Hung. That's why. Okay, yeah. I, yeah, okay. I he's just a good actor. He's in Deep Blue Sea. He's, he's in Deep Blue Sea. He's one of my favorite films, too, Thursday. He was he was ruling that era for a little bit. Uh, yeah, I'm but yeah, the first the first Punisher though is like god awful compared to the second one. The second one is actually the Punisher. Yeah, Jigsaw true. is amazing in that film. I, I love the Punisher one. I'm sorry. No, no, the second <laughs> Punisher is way better. Ray Stevenson. You don't turn on the Saint family, dude. Ray Stevenson's amazing in that film. <laughs> I mean, he literally punches people's skulls into yeah. dust in that film. <laughs> <laughs> that is a guns blazing, shoot 'em up. Don't care who's in my way. I've almost eliminated all the entire mob film. I mean, I, if you've never seen Warzone, the Punisher film, you should see it. It's good. Yeah, I, I don't it's know. It's better than the first. I, it's good. See them both. See, see it for Henry Heck. Is that the guy's name? The Johnny Cash character in the first guy. He's like, I like that song. <laughs> that is a good yeah. scene. Yeah. I'm just singing at your funeral. That is a good scene. That's one of my other favorite <laughs> I scenes. That guy, I like how he dies, too, and just puts the knife and <laughs> just shoots him around the throat. That was a good scene. <laughs> yeah. So back, but yeah, back to the mist. That was a very good film. I think this is an underrated uh, Stephen King film. I put this up there with Misery. I, you know what I mean? I put this up there with a bunch of his greats. Um, obviously, over it, both iterations. <laughs> oh, shocker! But yeah, the mist, underrated classic. His best movie though is Green Mile by far. Yeah, of, of course. And a lot of people don't know that that is actually Stephen King's. I know. That's why I love when I always list out. Uh, Films by Stephen King, I always go, Tommy Knockers, The Mist, Green Mob. And people are like, wait, Green Mob? I'm like, yeah, he wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, he, wait, I thought he only did uh, Maximum Overdrive. But like I told you guys, all his movies, man, The Mist, Aliens, yep. you know, Tommy Knockers, Aliens, It, Aliens, The Green Mile, Aliens. <laughs> yeah. you, you know what? For real, he, 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 John Coffey might have been an alien. <laughs> it might have been oh, an yeah. ETS kind of alien. Yeah. Is it because of the stuff that comes out of him? No, it's because he's black, Steve. Of course, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? <laughs> it was because it was like, that was the twist right there. That was the twist. <laughs> They're like, he's an alien. But, you know, I'm telling you, it was. He was a freaking alien, that's a man. Good, that's a good point. How, is Stephen King's films all about aliens? And then they put Mr. Noodle to death. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh. Poor Mr. My Noodle. Fa- he was my favorite part of that film. Oh. And yeah. Mr. Jangles. Oh, yeah. God. Uh, you you oh, could point mouse. it against him. Mr. Noodle's death or that black guy who's got the spiders in him from the mist death. <laughs> that, that generally, like, messed that me was up. Creepy. That, that was, was like, creepy. creepy. That, that would make me cringe a bit. I don't know what part of the, that was worse, watching that part happen or the fact that they actually got that burn solution, got it back to the guy, and he died anyway. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> crash. And then they had the other guy. The uh, uh, He was kind of an up-and-coming actor. He's the guy they stab, and they kind of sacrifice him to the mist. He's oh. like, it's all our fault. I'm sorry, and they stab him. It's like, was... stop saying that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, leave us alone. Yeah, stop but... talking with all these crazy people. Yeah, here. but back to that chick. She was, oh my god, like the scene where she's, uh, they try to escape, and she's just sitting in the chair with the knife, kind of like, where are you going? Yeah, where are you going? And then you see everybody kind of collapse on him, and the the most unlikely hero, the most badass person in the film, not not the Punisher, not him. It's that that other fucking shop clerk with the gun, the the guy who looks nerdy as hell, and then he's just like, damn, this guy is like blasting all these damn aliens. <laughs> he dies tragically. I, I actually felt bad when he died. You know, you know the whole entire Marsha Gray Hart playing that religious night. I, I mean, speaking as someone who's Christian and all, I thought it was hilarious to see how high and right, mighty, righteous she was able to get 
trying to convert all these people, saying, huh. oh, it's our sin. Don't you believe in God? No, I'm not going to lie, man, but I kind of feel like if some stuff went down like that, we were all three in that mall, you would probably stab me and Robert <laughs> before that chick I, even started. I'd stab <laughs> both of you, just to be sure. Rob sees the mist coming, and then the, you know, the guy's like, there's something in the mist. I wouldn't even <laughs> wait. They'd be like, there's something in the mist. Why are you stabbing people? <laughs> Like, just gotta make sure. Yeah. There might be, there is, there might be, or there might not be something in the mess. Who knows? Because the guy comes back, like, bloody, so you know something's up. Rob's first instinct is just to throw everybody out of the thing. Like, I need to test if this is real. <laughs> be my guinea pig. Yeah, fuck that movie. <laughs> with the ending, I mean, I have a love and hate kind of relationship with it. I mean, was you it dated good? this movie? Funny. <laughs> really funny. <laughs> Take it to dinner. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> but I mean, how I liked it was like seeing like he sacrificed and putting everybody out of their misery because they don't know if they're going to survive or not. But the only thing that I hate about it is just Wait, like. five minutes, dude. I yeah. know. I mean, it, just how he gets out of the Jeep and he's like. Struggling, oh my no! god, I can't kill myself. No! And then all of a sudden, I know, Barbie what was that thing that passed? Come no, back. I did the wrong thing. Uh, yeah, that was yeah, funny. That's a messed up. You know what's funny too about that scene? Because it pans out in that scene when he's screaming, and you just see all these military guys just like looking at him what and still that burning. Problem? Like, yeah. <laughs> like, hey, we're, we're busy burning aliens over here. Could you keep it down, okay? You got enough screaming going on. Listen to this thing. <laughs> Burning the spider. <laughs> so you know what? I do want to before we end this. I do want to hear Rob's take of why you did not like the Miss Show. Oh, because there was hardly anything in it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the movie, you know, there's obviously stuff in the mist right off the bat, but the show was like, there's something in the mist, and I was like, ooh, okay, okay, okay. First episode, we get by, you know, okay, set up. Nothing came out in the mist. All right, we got that first scene where something obviously killed somebody with the camera, but. <laughs> So then we get to the second episode, then I'm like, okay, these people are obviously, there's something going, they all hate each other, they all have qualms with each other, but what's in the mist? <laughs> <laughs> and then by the third episode, I was like, okay, we're definitely going to see what's in the mist in this, this time. And then by the third episode, I was like, you know what? I'm fucking done with this show. <laughs> because I skipped ahead, and there was still nothing in that mist. Wow. There was wow. nothing in that mist, man. And it's, they're in a, uh, a mall this time, right? More people? There's like, it's different places, different places. Okay. Yeah, different they, people. They, they, I think they stuck to uh, the grocery store. Yeah. Like another it's, another it's, crazy lady it's just, who's like... Yeah, there's a few different stories in that yeah. whole series. Yeah. It was dumb. I, I tried watching it, I saw it, mean, and I had to agree with you, I mean, show the aliens, do something, and I want to hear about people's stories yeah. and all this crap, show people Yeah, dying. but doesn't want to be here with you because she knows you were cheating with her husband. I mean, it was like some kind of like story That's out of a really... high school. <laughs> no, that wasn't anything, book. I'm just saying, that oh. might as well be in the drama. Right. Like, I mean, that would have just... been better drama than what was in there. You slept with Jimmy, and then you just have that spider come and burn, <laughs> burn the face of the acid. I mean, I was hoping... Like, now he has no choice spiders. but to sleep with her. <laughs> I wanted the spider scene. I was hoping to see the spider scene. Yeah, I didn't care. I just wanted something in that mist. Right. I would have given anything just to see a tentacle. <laughs> <laughs> something. Yeah, I don't know. Something squiddish. It didn't last too long. I don't even think it lasted towards the No, I didn't. Season, yeah, right? I think it was done after that. Should have been. It was terrible. All right, everybody. This has been episode 21 on Your Real Sharks podcast. And you're listening to this signal from 20,000 Leagues in the Sea. I'm your host, Rob, with Stephen Bell, and we'll catch you guys on the flip side. Good night. Good night.